the Commonwealth Savings Bank of Australia, the bank for all the family, takes pleasure in presenting the show for all the family, Life with Dexter. Or just a rainy day Be sure to save the friendly Commonwealth way So listen to this advice and start right today To bank Commonwealth save Commonwealth bank Commonwealth now There comes a time in every boy's life When his parents begin to wonder what his future will be What path in life is the young man going to follow? Now this subject came up one Saturday afternoon at the Dutton's At three o'clock, Dexter and Jesse were alone in the living room when Dexter asked his wife a very important question, a question of vital urgency. Jesse, what's for dinner? (laughs) Dexter, when the children aren't about and we're alone together, which is very rarely, you think of the most interesting and romantic things to say. I'm sorry, dear. Don't you ever think of anything else except what's for dinner? Yes, I often think of what's for breakfast and lunch. <laughs> I, I, sorry, it was just a little joke. I, <clears throat> I, I, that's a smart little dress you're wearing, Jesse. Is it new? Mm, fairly new. I've only had it four years. <coughs> mm. Dexter, look, there is a subject we should discuss while Ashley's not here. Have you given any thought to the future? To to what future? Well, to Ashley's future. You mean to which boy's home he'll finish up at? (laughs) That isn't funny. It's time the boy and his parents began thinking seriously about his career. What's he going to do when he leaves school? Well, last thing I heard, he wanted to join Bill Stubbs on the garbage cart. (laughs) And that's just about what you'd allow your son to do, isn't it? Well, they do tell me it's quite a lucrative position. To quote my son's own words, he said to me last week... Dad, I reckon working on the garbage cart would be a real snifter job. (laughs) Dexter, if you're not going to talk sense, then let's not talk at all. Sounds like an argument, Buring. What's the subject this time? Oh, your father's in one of his hilariously funny moods when you can't talk to him seriously. Daddy, be serious. (laughs) How's that? Better than you look normally. Janie, I've been trying to get your father to discuss Ashley's future and what he's going to be. Now, you're a girl, and a a girl's future is almost assured. You're right there, dear. A girl's future is assured. She starts going out and meeting boys, then she selects her prey like a spider watching a fly, and before the poor boy knows it, he's entangled in the web of marriage from which there's no escape. Well, get him! Don't worry, I got him. I wish another spider had spied him first. Jesse, please, can't you have a sense of humour? I'm only making jokes. No one's more concerned about Ashley's future place in life than I am. I'd like to see him a famous lawyer or, or a doctor. Look, if Death either was a doctor, I wouldn't let him bandage my big toe. Well, there are plenty of interesting occupations for a young man today without him becoming a lawyer or doctor. Anyhow, Ashley hasn't the brain for that. That brings up another question. Does Ashley have a brain? Now, look, if you're going to start your silly, stupid... I apologize. I apologize. I'm going outside right now to find my son and have a man-to-man talk with him. Do you know where he is? I think you'll find him in the garage. (laughs) And mind you do have a proper talk with him. Yes, dear. When there are grey skies, I don't mind the grey skies. You make them blue, sunny boy. Hey, what's that? Smoke coming from the garage. The car, my car. Ashley, are you in here? There you are. Where's all the smoke? What are you hiding behind your back? Hiding? Hiding? Me, me, hiding? You're experimenting with something. Now, show me. What is it? You're, you're, you're right, Dad. I, I, I've been experimenting with something, but, but it's all over now. I've finished. Whatever you've got there, it's still sending up smoke. Now, what is it? I demand to see it at once. Well, it's... 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 Uh, 
It's only what's left of a cigarette. A cig... A cigarette? You've been smoking a cigarette? Y- yes, but only as an experiment. I'll stay out the butt right away. <laughs> do, do, you, do you mean to stand there and tell me you've smoked that whole cigarette? Well, yes, Dad, but, but I can give you more word on one thing. It's the absolute truth. What? It definitely wasn't a king size. <laughs> While Dexter is solving the problem of Ashley smoking, let's talk about something of interest to you. In other words, let's talk about your holidays. Probably, like most people, you take your holidays in summertime. If you do, then right now is the time for you to start planning for them. And when I say planning, that includes saving. Because you can't have a good holiday without money. A visit to the Commonwealth Savings Bank each payday, between now and when you go on leave can make all the difference between just moping around filling in time and a holiday you can really talk about. Now, here's a little tip from me. Before you go to bed tonight, decide where you'd like to spend your next vacation. Reckon up how much it'll cost. Divide that sum by the number of weeks before your holidays are due. The answer is how much you should pay each week into your Commonwealth Savings Bank account. Keep that holiday in view all the time and you'll find you're looking forward to visiting the Commonwealth Savings Bank each week. Try it, and see if I'm not right when I say you enjoy saving when you bank Commonwealth. Ashley, would you please pass the salt? Sure, Dad. Mummy, I don't understand you. And neither do I. Your father finds Ashley smoking a cigarette and doesn't even punish him. Oh, Dexter, you might at least stop the boys' allowance for a few weeks. Jesse, I've thought it over very carefully, and I don't see why the boy should be punished. If he feels he's old enough to smoke, then he must be old enough to smoke. Oh, gee, Dad, do you mean it? Certainly your father doesn't mean it. But I do, I do. Men start smoking at different ages, and Ashley's decided on starting a little young. So what? So what? So what? So he deserves a good, thorough thrashing, that's what. No, not at all. Now he's made a start, I'm quite happy for the boy to continue smoking regularly. Well, well. Slither and jellyfish! No, son, I'd advise you to stick to tobacco. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, uh, have you uh, finished your dinner? Oh, oh just about. Uh, good, I- I've also finished mine, and I'm going to top it off with a fine cigar. Would you care for one? Uh, uh, c- 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 cigar? Dexter, don't you dare. Please, Jesse, uh, allow us men to handle our own affairs. Uh, here, son, I, I, I pierced it for you. Uh, get the feel of it in your mouth while I light mine. <clears throat> Daddy's <clears throat> gone round the bend. Shh. Maybe he hasn't. Oh. Okay, son, I light it. Got the feel of it in your mouth? Oh, oh, sure of. Why, well, I have a job holding my head up. Now, here's your light. Now, puff in and puff in big. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Wait a Something caught in your throat? I, I guess some smoke just went down the wrong way. Oh, oh, dear. Yes, well, I, I should have told you the right way to draw on a cigar. Now, look, uh, you take a big puff, much bigger than you do with a cigarette, then you inhale the smoke right down into the lungs. Keep it there for a moment and then exhale. Uh, watch and I'll show you. Got it? Uh, now, now, you go ahead and do that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Don't mind mind a little coffee like that. Once you've done it a few times, you'll enjoy the cigar and really feel like a man. I I, I will. Sure, now, let's settle back and really enjoy our smokes. Oh, the smell, it's vile. Oh, turn your head away or you'll get asphyxiated. Guess they... They last a long time, don't they? Keep puffing on it, son. Don't let it go out. No, I... 
I wouldn't want it to go out, would I? <laughs> Ashley, you haven't drunk your milk. <laughs> Winston Churchill, drink your milk. I, I'll, I'll, I'll be back in a minute. Excuse me. <laughs> oh, brother, he's sick, really sick. <laughs> Dexter, I must hand it to you. At first, I thought you'd gone stark staring mad, but you did a very wise thing. You certainly did. Ashley will never want to smoke again. <laughs> That's right. You know, dear, there's one thing I can't understand is where you got the cigars. You never smoke cigars. Well, Jessie, I, I found a couple in an old... Uh, I'll be back in a minute. Excuse me, sir. Come in. Hey, dear, are, are you busy? Yes, I'm up to my ears in work, and so should you be. Well, may I see you for a few minutes? You may. If you don't mind me closing my eyes so I don't see you. I'd like to speak to you on a personal matter. I'd appreciate your expert advice. Okay, sit down. Have a cigar. I, see, uh, <laughs> I, I had one Saturday, thanks. All I want is your advice about my son, Ashley. Problem is, how do we decide on, on his future? One day he wants to be in politics, the next he wants to be in a circus. Well, at least the occupations are closely related. <laughs> Last night, the boy firmly made up his mind he was cut out to be a member of the diplomatic corps. Five minutes later, he said he, he, he might rather open a hamburger shop. There is a slight dissimilarity there. Ten minutes after this, his idea was to become a big businessman like K.G. Wilmot. Ashley said that? Yes, he said, I'd like to become a, a big businessman like K.G. Wilmot, only I don't think I've got the stomach for it. <laughs> <laughs> the boy should be a comedian, he'd star. I'm sorry, but look, K.G., seriously, what should I do about my son? There must be some way to find out in what occupation a boy's future lies. Of course there is, Janini. Haven't you ever heard of a vocational guidance expert? Yeah, I've often heard of that, but what does it mean? It means exactly what it is. A vocational guidance expert is an expert on guidance for your child's future vocation. Oh, vocation. I always thought it had to do with guiding you to a place for your holidays. <laughs> oh, mummy, uh... Thank heaven Ashley's got some of his mother's intelligence. Dexter, there happens to be a vocational guidance expert in this building, Peter Swift. You know him as well as I do. Peter Swift? Is that what he does in his little office? Yes, that's what Peter does in his little office. Do you think he ran an SP bookie joint? <laughs> Hi, family. I'm home. Oh, hi, Dad. Hi, Daddy, darling. Hello, dear. Uh, How are things at the office today? Oh, Jesse, there's only one thing at the office, and he worries me every day. <laughs> Although I must admit, he did give me some good advice this morning. I believe I've solved the problem of Ashley's future. Gee, Dad, you don't mean Mr. Wilmot's going to take me into the firm? Uh, no, no, son. According to KG, one Dutton in the firm is exactly one too many. However, KG has arranged for you to have an appointment with a vocational guidance expert. A what, a water expert? <laughs> Dexter, I thought a vocational guidance expert was a man who advises you where to go for your holidays. Oh, Jesse, how could anyone be so stupid? <laughs> it's vocational guidance. Jesse, you surprise me. Mummy, that's exactly what Ashley needs. An expert to find out his capabilities, if any. But, Dad, there's no need for it now. I've firmly made up my mind what I want to be. I'm going to be a famous writer. A famous writer? Y you mean one who writes clever ditties on brick walls? <laughs> no, I'm serious. I'll be a famous writer of stories, plays, poems, and maybe even popular songs. Oh, an hour ago, you'd firmly made up your mind to be a film star. And before that, you were going to be a horse trainer. Well, I know, but this is different. Just before Dad came home, I had this terrific inspiration for becoming a writer. <laughs> I know it's the real thing because it was like a voice whispering in my ear. Then something in here sort of snapped. 
Probably your braces. <laughs> Look, Ashley, KG and I have made an appointment with Peter Swift. He's got an office in our building. He'll see you at 12.45 on Friday during your lunch hour. Oh, Dad, I want to be a writer, and I know I'm going to be one. You have an appointment at 12.45 on Friday. Look, supposing I can prove I've got talents as a writer during the next couple of days. You have an appointment at 12.45 on Friday. Gee, but that isn't fair. At least give me a chance. Six to give him a chance. You've nothing to lose. We know he can't prove he's a writer. All right. All right, son. You've got two days to prove your literary talents. But if you prove nothing within that time... You, you have, have an appointment, appointment at 12.45 on Friday! <laughs> Would you listen to this piece of poetry and give me your honest opinion? Uh, go ahead, son. What is it? It's called Ode to a House. Go on. <clears throat> a house is made of bricks and mortar. To own one, every family ought to. Be it near the bush or water, a house is home to son and daughter. <clears throat> That's the first verse. <laughs> you mean there's more? <laughs> Sure, there's a second verse, and it's even better. Oh. A house is built on a foundation, like the backbone of a nation. Though sometimes it's like a railway station. It's home sweet home, whatever its location. That's the end. You can say that again. Ashley, it's time you were in bed. I, 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 look, I, I've just this minute finished my latest poem. Would you all like to hear it? No! no! Gee, but I've still got till tomorrow night. You said you'd give me a chance. Son, we've heard seven poems already, and none of them shows promise. Oh, what a gross understatement. Go ahead, Ashley. We must be fair. Thanks, Mom. This one's called Pitter Patter. Oh, brother. <laughs> Pitter Patter on the ground. The raindrops make that little sound. Another thing that I have found is how they improve grass that is browned. <laughs> More? More. Pitter patter, pitter patter. On the grass they all do spatter. Pitter patter, what a clatter. You can't hear yourself talk when you're having a natter. <laughs> Well, Dad, what do you say? If I said anything, it wouldn't be a word. It'd be a rude noise. <laughs> Look, everyone, will you listen while I... Definitely yeah, not. It's not another poem. Ashley, look... Uh... We've heard a dozen poems and two short plays and we're not impressed with any of them. But I've now discovered my real talent. I've composed a hit song. It'll really send you. And don't think we won't go. <laughs> oh, we might as well agree to hear the song because we're going to anyway. Good on you, Mum. You're a sport. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if this number gets to the top of the hit parade. It's called, I'll Sue You, Sue. Well, it sounds almost bad enough for the hit parade. <laughs> it's crazy and cool and it'll pulverize you. <clears throat> now listen. I'll sue you, sue, you won't let me sleep. I'll sue you, sue, late hours I keep. I wish you'd get right out of my sight. I can think of you any day and night. I don't even know what is wrong from right. I'll have to sue you, sue, sue. Skittily do. <laughs> I've gone. And quite far enough. <laughs> Boy, is he gone. Oh, well, Dan, what's your verdict? You have an appointment at, at 12.45 12 12 on Friday. <laughs> Dexter is certainly doing his best to see that Ashley's future is assured. And I'd like to say a few words... To all those other mothers and fathers, too, who are listening in tonight. No doubt all of you want the best there is in life for your children. 
You want them to make an even greater success of their lives than you have made of yours. Now, here is a question I'd like you to answer to yourselves. How often have you said, if I only had the money, and because you did not have the money, how often did you miss opportunities? And now to get back to the subject of your children. There is a simple way to ensure that they do not miss opportunities. Open trust accounts for them in the Commonwealth Savings Bank. In addition, buy them a Commonwealth Savings Bank money box and encourage them to save. If you do these things, you are teaching your children the value of money and what they can get by saving. And believe me, your children will be grateful to you later. So go along and open accounts at the Commonwealth Savings Bank and week by week, Bank Commonwealth. <laughs> says, please enter. We, we can go straight in. Well, come on. Oh, hi, Mr. Wilmot. Hi, Dad. Well, son, hard at it already? Now, where's Mr. Swift? Well, he had to go out urgently for something or other. He told me to answer these questions in the allotted time, and when I've finished, leave the papers on his desk when I'm going. No. Oh. He's not here. Can we just take a look at your questions? Oh, oh gee, Dad, no. Look, I'm, I'm racing for time. There are plenty of spare sets in that room. You could both go in there and read them. Oh, come on, Dexter. We'll do that and leave the boy in peace. Peter won't mind if we look at the papers. Yeah, here's a stack of blank ones here on the table. A couple of chairs. We might as well sit down and be comfortable. Dexter, I've got a colossal idea. Why don't we each fill one of these in while we're here? We might discover we're in the wrong business. Yeah, we might discover you should have been a, a, an air pilot. Yeah. We might even discover you should have been an air hostess. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, there's just one thing wrong with the idea. How do we know Peter Swift won't send us both a bill? It's costing me money for Ashley. He won't send us a bill. We're doing it for a gag. I know what. We won't put our proper names on the papers. We'll put John Smith and Bob Jones. You're John Smith and I'm Bob Jones. Yeah. Uh, then when Peter gives us Ashley's results, he, he might happen to mention something about extra papers. Exactly. But we'll pretend we're not responsible. Uh-huh. Yeah, right now, let's get them done in a hurry. What's this first question? Answer yes or no or uncertain to the following list. Do you feel well and strong? Well, I can answer that with yes. Yeah, I'll, I'll put down yes for that, too. Second question, do you know your exact height and waist measurements? Oh, I'm 5 feet 10 and 36 inches round the waist. I'm 5 feet 7. But I don't know my waist measurements. Well, why don't you just put 5 feet 7 up and across? <laughs> Jesse, then KG wrote Bob Jones on his paper and I put John Smith on mine. I think you both had a terrific hide doing a thing like that. So do I. If I were Mr. Swift, I'd send you both the bill. Oh, heck, Mr. Swift won't even know who filled in the papers. Hi there, Dutton. May I come in? Come in, Kimberly. Just rousing on Dexter for what you and he did this afternoon. Oh, nothing but a practical joke, Jesse. I thought I'd come in and see if Ashley heard how he got on. I haven't phoned Swift yet. Ashley, are you sure he said I could phone him tonight? Mm-hmm. Yes, Dad. Before he went out of his office, he told me to finish the questions by myself and have you ring him at home this evening. Well, Dexter, this is this evening. Get him on the blower. Well, I've written his number on the phone pad. I must say I'm a little bit scared. Supposing he mentions Mr. Smith and Mr. Jones. That's what we want him to do. If he mentions Smith and Jones, just play dumb. Play dumb. In other words, act natural. <laughs> Oh, all right, I'll, I'll make the call. Dexter, if he does happen to mention Smith and Jones, try to get some information without admitting anything. All I really want to know is how Ashley went. Uh, hello, uh, is that Peter Swift? Oh, Peter, uh, this is Dexter Dutton. Uh, have you had time to check Ashley's papers? Uh-huh. I is that so? Uh, or a what? I see. Oh, well, I, I'm very pleased to hear it. Uh, th that's good news. I beg your pardon? Uh, Smith and Jones? No, no. Uh, who, who are they? Yes, that is funny. Yeah. Oh. 
Oh, oh yeah. Well, thank you, Peter. Thanks again. Uh, bye now. Well, quick, Dad. How did I do? Oh, you, you did very well, son. Peter says you'll make an excellent architect, designer, or engineer, but foremostly an architect. Oh, boy, that's it. I'd love to be an architect. It's a wonderful profession. Oh, I'll say. Well, looks like you've got a clever boy in the family. Uh, next, uh, what did he say about Smith and Jones? Well, he said he found two extra papers, and it's a mystery to him who filled them in. Did he happen to check them? Yes, he did. He said Mr. Smith and Mr. Jones would both make excellent street cleaners. <laughs> Listening to the Duttons each week, I don't know who has the greater problem. Parents trying to understand their teenage children, or teenage children trying to understand their parents. But one thing I do know is that thousands and thousands of teenagers have opened Commonwealth Savings Bank accounts this year. These young people realize that at the present time they have a golden opportunity to save. They also realize that once they reach their early 20s, they need a lot of money for such things as getting married or going abroad or many other expensive things. If there are any young people listening who have not yet started saving, then for your own sakes, don't delay any longer. Those who started work this year and opened Commonwealth Savings Bank accounts then already have quite a nice amount saved. So follow their example. Open a Commonwealth Savings Bank account next payday and from then on, week by week... Bank Commonwealth. If money can buy it, saving will get it. So bank Commonwealth now. For a car or a bike, just a rainy day. Be sure to save the friendly Commonwealth way. So listen to this advice and start right today. To bank Commonwealth, save Commonwealth Bank Commonwealth now. Life with Dex is produced by Noel Judd and written by Willie Fennell. And this is John Dunn inviting you to enjoy Life with Dex at the same time next week from this station. And remember, you'll always enjoy life with a Commonwealth Savings Bank account. <laughs>